love that we are celebrating. And the most famous verse of all, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Do we love the world as God loves the world? <laughs> Let's, we're going to kind of uh, head on over to the map. So you have an option to take your chair and turn it around or however you want to get comfortable, but we're going we're gonna to be looking at this map for a little bit over here. This is a map of the world. Seven, over seven billion people <laughs> occupying the land on the earth. And God so loved this world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for every single person. People in Botswana, Africa, Waluna, Austria, Australia, just all over the world, Jesus Christ came to die. Now, God could have made salvation, you know, uh, whatever, if he could have. <laughs> some kind of ritual, some kind of cultural event, some kind of uh, doing something, or whatever. There's many philosophies throughout this world. There's many different cultures that have come up throughout time and, and, and still are all throughout this world. Different world views. There's all kinds of religions and people saying, hey, you, you can get to heaven or whatever they want to call their afterlife that they believe. But the Bible says that there's only one way to heaven. The Bible says that there's no religious thought, there's no being a good enough person, there's no, you know, do these certain rituals and you can make it there. Because think about it, if you were God and there was another way to get to him besides sacrificing his own son, wouldn't you do that? Didn't Jesus even pray in the Garden of Gethsemane saying, Father, if there's any other way, let it be done. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Don't you think God would have done that? But see, everybody on this planet, from Adam and Eve on to now, today, every person has sinned except for Jesus Christ. Every person has fallen short of the glory of God. You look at the laws of God, and everyone's broken it. And it's not just the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, yes, are great for any society, but Jesus goes far beyond that. The Word of God goes far beyond that. He says, if you even looked lustfully at a woman, you've committed adultery. So there goes all the men in the world. <laughs> it says... Not just murder, but if you, you come against somebody in contempt with your words, if you call someone you fool, you're in danger of the fire of hell. There's all these different things. He says, if you take my words and you just listen to them, that's not good enough. You have to put it into practice. We've all sinned some way, shape, or form in our lives. And if there was any other way... God would have allowed that. But the only way to fulfill the righteousness for you and I, because when we sin, there's a debt to be paid. The only way to pay that debt was through the Son, Jesus Christ, living a sinless life, a life that we couldn't live, fulfilling the law, and then sacrificing his own life to be the payment of death that we all deserve so that all who believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at Israel. Israel's right here. It's kind of like in the smack middle of the world. <laughs> this little tiny country. That's where God chose to send Jesus Christ to die on a cross for our sins. And he made it so easy. <laughs> 
that anybody in the world has the choice to believe that he died for their sins. And they can believe that and be saved. He made it easy. It wasn't some cultural ritual that has changed throughout time. It wasn't, you know, you got to do all these good works or anything like that. He made it easy. He paid the penalty and he just said, believe. Believe what my son did for you. And then when we believe, that's the start. That's the, the justification where we've been washed by our sins. The hard part is, What's after is the sanctification of living a life of holiness and righteousness, being obedient to God's word. And that's where people fall away because they say, oh, I want to live my own life. I want to do it my way. I don't want to give up things in my life. When God is requiring to give up everything, but there's a blessing for it. And there's a blessing in this life and a blessing on the next one. The new heaven and new earth, living with God forever. But God made it easy that he loved the world so much that he paid the price. We need to get to that place where we're loving the world as God loved the world. You see, God loves every single person on this planet the same He doesn't love somebody less. He doesn't love somebody in Tanzania less than somebody in Iran and vice versa. God's love is the same for every single person. In fact, he made every person in his image. So as human beings, we should give dignity and respect to each person. It doesn't matter if they're a homeless drunk on your driveway. You look at them through the eyes of God, that they were created in his image. It doesn't matter if they're an African family in Botswana. You look at them with the dignity and respect because they're made in God's image, and God loves them just as much as he loves you. And we need to have that heart and that mindset for mankind and be praying for the world and to love others as ourselves. Now, it doesn't mean we have to agree with people. (laughs) It doesn't mean that we have to, you know, put up with them, you know, with wickedness and and them wanting to harm you or anything like that. Um, You see, God loves the world, but it's not a a squishy love, a a fluffy love, where it's like, oh, he just loves everyone, so do whatever you want, and God will forgive you. God is love, but that love is also mixed in with his character of holiness and justice and righteousness. And so that's why there is a day called the day in the Bible of God's judgment. There is a judgment. There is, you know, it's not like, okay, we're living this life and there's, you know, what's going to come at the end. There is blessings for serving the Lord. And there are an an eternal judgment for not. That love comes in, and let's just take an example of a family where a father is abusive to the wife and the kids. Love doesn't go, oh, well, let you know, just forgive you, husband. Leave him alone. He's going through a lot. Everything's okay. Love does not do that. God does not do that dealing with nations and dealing with people. Love comes in and says, we need to protect the ones who can't protect themselves. Love comes in and separates that husband and says, you need to go to jail because you need opportunity to get away from that sin and to repent. And see, that's what God wants. We see it all throughout the word of God. We see it all throughout history is that God gives people an enormous amount of time to repent of their sins. God is just, and judgment will come, but he's also extremely gracious, extremely merciful. And thank God for that, for each of our lives. And we need to look at people with that grace and that mercy and that patience. We're too quick as humans to 
to lay down the, gra the gavel and say, you're guilty, man. You just deserve, get out of my life. I give up on you and everything like that. We need to have that grace and mercy that God has on our lives for other people. But God has grace and mercy on individuals and nations even in the Bible, he was saying, hey, I'm going to give you this land, but I can't give it to you yet because Assyria, their sin hasn't reached its full level. See, God's grace and mercy is, is great, but it does have a point. It has a point for every person and every nation. And when that point gets to where the people don't repent... And they, they don't humble themselves and they don't go back to, to following God according to his word. Then that judgment eventually comes. And we need to be careful as a people in our own lives. We need to be careful as a nation of the United States where we're living in. We need to be careful of not getting to that point. Because God will only contend with us for so long. But he's so gracious and patient and merciful, he allows time for us to repent and turn to him. You know, we live here in the United States, here where we're at, kind of around right here. Some people watching on, you guys are Southern California over here. I know we got some watching from Texas, some in Colorado, wherever you're at watching. You know, this, this is just one country out of all of this. And there's a pride that can be a good pride and a pride that can be a bad pride. <laughs> a good pride is this American flag. I, I'm very proud of this flag and what it represents. I'm very proud to live in America. I'm proud of our history, that our forefathers built this nation on the word of God and the principles of the word of God. From our nation, we have sent out through, throughout, since the beginning of our nation, missionaries all over this world proclaiming Jesus Christ. Maybe more than any other country, I don't know, but a, a lot. We have been blessed tremendously as a nation and I'm proud of our nation. That's a good pride. But then the bad pride comes in, which I think, I know in my life, I've dealt with this. And I just continue to have to fight. And I know as a country, we have had pride in a negative sense. Thinking that we're better than everybody else. Or at least most people. We're better than the third world countries, some of those in, in Africa, some of those throughout the, the world. We're better because we have more stuff than them. We have better homes. We have better cars. We have more money. We're better because we have a, a mighty military force. We're better because we have nuclear power. We're better. We think that when we travel, everyone should speak English. They should conform to us instead of us going and learning their language. Sometimes we think we're better than other people when God so loved the world that he loves the people in Gaborón, Africa, Calcutta, India, Mongolia, um, Turkey, Iran, Egypt, Sweden, Canada. He loves everybody the exact same. The exact same, with the same amount of love. Nobody is greater than another. And we need to humble ourselves and say, God, forgive us of any negative pride that we have in our lives and as a nation. And we need to pray for the world. We need to, as a nation, be careful. We're at a place in our nation. You know, we, the violence, the disunity, the anger, the hatred. We need to get to a place 
where we take the word of God and we start living according to it. We as a nation have fought hard to get prayer out of schools, to get the Bible out of schools so our children aren't getting taught the word of God. We are fighting to get prayer and the word of God out of our government and strip down the word of God, Jesus Christ, from being proclaimed. We are fighting everything we can to get rid of this, but we kill babies on a gross amount every single day. And we've been doing that for years. We are taking out the good and replacing it with evil and calling evil good and good evil. And our nation is getting to that rising point of the sin where God says, I have had enough. And the abortion is just one example of many. And we need to come and we need to repent and we need to pray and we need to say, God, have grace and mercy on us. In Amos chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, it says, Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. He's calling us to seek good. Not good on what we think is good, or what... Um, our media tells us is good, our politicians tell us, or our favorite athlete or actor or actress tells us what's good, what the Word of God says is good. That's what we have to go back to and ground our life in because we're getting all kinds of information saying this is okay, this is all right, it's all good. Let's just love one another. And let everybody believe what they want, do what they want, and it's going to be okay when we have a just, righteous God who's saying, I love you, and I love you enough to discipline you, and I love you enough to pour out my wrath, separate that husband who's being abusive, separate a nation because they're falling in more and more away from God, and bring forth judgment and wrath because he's saying, wake up, I want you to repent and I want you to turn to me and start living your life. Salvation is free gift. Believing in Christ and by his grace. But sanctification is a lifelong process. And if we don't stay in that process, we fall away from the vine. And we shrivel up and die. As individuals and as a nation. So what do we do? <laughs> We remember that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. We live our life according to his word. We pray for our nation. We pray for the world. And we ask for God's grace and mercy. And we proclaim the truth. But we do it in love. There's a lot going on with, now with social media, right? Our world is different than ever before. We have a platform that people in the past never had. We have to be spirit-led and word of God driven of what we are speaking out. We need to speak the truth. We need to stand up for the word of God, but we do it in a way that is in love, that is showing mercy, but is also saying we're not backing down from what the word of God says. And we stand on that and we believe it. And we pray. And we keep praying. And we keep praying. But God's in control. <laughs> but there is a judgment day. And we need to be prepared for what is coming. And asking God to help us to get there as people, as a nation, and throughout the world. You know, God, this little country, again, Israel, <laughs> where the Bible was written, 
where Jesus lived, died, and rose again. We need to get back to the basics, <laughs> back to the Word of God, and saying, okay, this is the final authority. I need to take out all the white noise of everything else that's been thrown at me, and I need to get back and renew my mind with the truth of God's Word, because on Judgment Day, it's not going to be good enough to say, hey, man, I was taught this all my life. He says, I gave you your wor the Word. <laughs> It's all right there of what I expect of you. We have no excuse except to go back and to live according to his word. And I want us to, to be encouraged to of start, if you haven't been, start praying for the world. <laughs> start praying that God's word would go forth into all the world. That his spirit would go forth. That his glory that the Bible says is over the, the earth. It would be rise risen up, that people would know there is a God. And he is the God of the Bible. And there is only one way. It's through his son. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. That that message would get out. Because our days are short. Our days are numbered. Time is short. Whether we die or whether Christ comes back before that, time is short. And all these seven and a half billion people are going to be dead within a hundred years. And a whole new group is going to be here. We need to be praying. We need to be praying. The church needs to rise up and pray that all these people, that many of them would come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because I want to get to heaven. And I'm excited because the Bible says that every tongue and tribe and nation is going to be there worshiping the Lamb of God. But it also says narrow is the road that leads to eternal life, but broad is the road that leads to destruction. I'm hoping for our generation because we are all praying <laughs> and we are interceding for the world that we're going to see it ton of people when we get there because the grace of God and the mercy of God and our prayers were being answered. We might not be able to physically go to every single place in the world and proclaim Jesus, but we can go there in our prayers. We can go there by seeking God and interceding all around the world, Brazil, Chile, Zaire, Indonesia, Praying, praying, praying. And don't think that your prayers have no power or effect because the Bible says that God can do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. But he calls us to pray. He calls us to believe. And if we're not praying, then things aren't happening. But when we pray, hearts begin to get softened. The word gets out and lives are changed. Aren't you glad that you believed in Jesus Christ, and you're saved? Aren't you glad somebody told you about Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad somebody was praying for you? We need to be those ones praying. And guess what? Wherever you're at in the world, the United States, wherever, be a light where you're at. Because that's the sphere of influence God has given you. There's people around you, family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, people in church, wherever you're at, wherever you go, be the light that God says. He says, church, you are the light of the world. Don't hide it. Don't hide that light. What that means is don't just hold it in and not tell anybody about it. Be a voice. Ask God for courage and boldness, and to be a light, one, as just by your living, doing what is right and good and proper, but also just, just share. You don't have to go into a whole 30-minute disposition with them. You just have to say, Jesus loves you. He died for you. Your life could be better because of what he's done for you. Just 
we can keep it simple because the gospel is simple for everyone. He made it simple. Jesus died for you. He rose from the dead. He's coming back again. Believe on him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life. He made it easy. Let's go out with that simple message and proclaim the gospel. The discipleship and the sanctification can come later. Let's be planting the seeds. Just do our part and be the light wherever we're at and shine for Jesus Christ. We're going to move back over here. And we're going we're gonna to take, we're going to take five minutes to pray for the world. The Bible says that the house of God is the house of prayer. <laughs> and yes, we worship, yes, we give the word, and we have our Tuesday night prayer group, and I know you pray at home, but we're going to take some time right now to pray for the world because God loves every person on the planet. And he wants all of them to come to know him as their personal Lord and Savior so that they may be in heaven with us who believe. So we're going to take five minutes and just intercede for the world. So... I'll come back up here when we're done. Let's pray.
God heard your prayers. <laughs> you know that? Your prayers count. <laughs> your prayers matter. Continue to pray. Continue to intercede for the world, for our nation. Continue to believe that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And believe that means for everybody, that everyone God loves just the same. And let's believe for a great harvest of souls that in our generation, we see many that are going to go to heaven because of our prayers and us being a light, doing what is right, seeking good and not evil, doing what God says, and seeing lives changed around us and all throughout the world. Because remember, God can do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. So if you're praying for a country, you're praying for the world, you're praying for whatever, God can do it in an even greater measure. So keep praying, keep believing, keep being the light, and be encouraged because God loves you. And he, he chose 12 men. One of them was destined for destruction, Judas who betrayed Jesus. But only out of those 11, God changed the world. <laughs> 11 people. God changed the world. Imagine what he can do with us. Let's go out and be world changers through the power of God and our faith. Lord, bless your people. Continue to help us to pray and intercede for the world. Give us the same love that you have the world. And let us treat people with dignity and respect because they are in your image. Let us shine the light you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ, and declare the word of God everywhere we go and to live it out. Let us be humble and let us seek your face always. And Lord, we do pray for the salvation of the world out of your great grace and mercy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Be blessed and have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you.